Hi music lovers, this is Cat with Hats, live, or not live, now it's live, <laughs> <laughs> for you it's not. Um, I'm here at the Los Angeles College of Music, and this is not a new place, I know it quite well, because I studied here with this man, Ralph Humphrey. Hello. Hello, good to see you again. Good to see you, thanks for taking your time. Oh, my pleasure. Okay. My pleasure. In case you don't know Ralph, uh, he's not only the drum department head of Los Angeles College of Music. He's also a session player here in LA, one of the few ones, has been for a long time and he's still on top of things. Yeah, sure. Still, <laughs> still doing it. Still doing it. And he's been playing with uh, the Don Ellis Big Band, with Frank Zappa, Manhattan Transfer, El Jaro, and the list go goes on. And of course he cut uh, a lot of movie tracks and... I've done a lot of that, a lot of television movie tracks and uh, actually one of the persons I did a lot of work with, Natalie Cole, who we, we lo uh, recently lost. Uh, some of the things I did with her were really quite fun. Uh, I gotta say, I, I, I miss her. Mm -hmm. Find more about Ralph in a quick video profile. I am Ralph Humphrey and I'm 71 years old. Born in California, Northern California, Berkeley to be precise living uh, in Mendocino, California. Oh, for a long time, Yamaha, uh, Zildjian, Remo, Vic Firth, and Prologix practice pads. I did learn in school. Uh, I played in symphonic band, symphonic orchestra, uh, percussion ensemble, jazz band. <clears throat> I do have an MA degree in uh, music performance, but actually on the drum set, I am self-taught. A good one. <laughs> I'm not bad, you know. Uh, I have my faults. Uh, I can be stubborn. Uh, I expect high results from my students, um, but I'm not too uh, abusive, I, I believe. Um, I always look for the best in my student. I always try to do constructive criticism, and uh, I think it's why <clears throat> I've been in the business as long as I have, because I know how to work with others. If plant A runs itself out, then I'll be good to go. <laughs> Maybe in junior high or, or freshman in high school, I attended a Count Basie concert. I know that my mother and father had records around the house. So I would listen to them all the time. I assume that they were mine, of course, uh, because I listened to them all the time. But probably one of the first recordings that I, I did extensive listening to was Pete Fountain and Jack Sperling. Uh, Pete Fountain, the clarinetist, Jack Sperling, the drummer. <clears throat> Actually, the other day I bought Lazarus, Dave Bo David Bowie, and a new album by Chris Potter called Sirens. I'm going to have to say it's going to be a couple of them. Buddy Rich, Joe Morello, Rufus Jones. Favorite place on earth? Home. I'm not a singer. Uh, I usually don't remember lyrics, so I probably am not singing lyrics. I'll probably in my head sing melody. Uh, I do like melody a lot. But I'm, I, I'm, I like all kinds of music, so I, that's a hard one to answer. Piano. Uh, there's so many great drummers that I adore and listen to all the time, so it's a hard one to answer. I like playing chess. A dream. Do a bit more traveling, maybe, you know? But otherwise, I've, I've fulfilled a lot of my dreams, I gotta say. Be prepared for my old Boy Scout days. <laughs> I don't have a website. That's, that's hard to believe, I know. Um, I know currently anybody who's sort of working their way into the business, it's a must, you know. I don't have a lot of catalog to share with people. Um, you know, and I came up in an era where everything was sort of live. Here's my card, uh, you know, check me out. Uh, that kind of thing. <laughs> so now you know a lot more about Ralph, but um, the reason why I'm here is because Ralph published a new book. His first book was Even in the Arts and the new one... Rhythm by the Numbers. Yes, and we'll give you a close look mm -hmm. into that. Check it out. Great. Ralph, now yeah. let's talk about your book. Yes. Uh, can you show it? Do you have it on your stand? Yes, I do. What it looks like. like. So. All right. And you open it to... Uh, I opened it randomly, um, and I 
gave you uh, a little two note idea in an, what I would call two notes in an eight note group. Two notes happen to fall on the and of one and on beat two, if you want to consider four beats in the measure. And so this, is, this to me is like a motif. And the idea then is to take that motif and put it in some sort of a context. The context could be including time signature, including the kind of note value that it is. I represent it as an eighth note, but you can swing it. You could actually think, think of those two eighth notes as two eighth note triplet values, or you can think of them as sixteenth notes. So you can take this page and apply it to all those note values, to any time signature that you would like, in any feel, in any tempo. So <clears throat> the idea then is, is to just give little bits of rhythmic uh, content that you take in the practice room and you work on. So let me give you an example of this. So the rhythm itself is if I count one, two, three, four, one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one. I'm swinging them right now because I want to play it in a swing context. So right now I'm going to play it as a little comping idea. I'll play some time, then you'll start to hear the comping in the snare drum. Then I'm going to start to move it around to other instruments, including the bass drum. So now I'm working on orchestration, or voicing, if you will. <clears throat> and that will involve I think technique, your ability to pull off the rhythm as you're playing some time. So here we go. One, two, three. Here's a faster version. I'm going to use snare drum, rack tom, floor tom, and I'm going to do a four bar phrase. And listen to how the three voice melody syncopates across the bar line a simple two note idea. Two, a one, two, three. So you can use it in a timekeeping role. The other thing you can do with it is put it as a sort of a fill. Target notes as you play in front of it, maybe after it. <clears throat> so I'm going to play two bars at a time, then I'm going to use the idea in a two bar fill. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Sorry about that. One, two, three. The idea is to find as many ways to play this one idea as I can on the drum set. <clears throat> and maybe at this point I would change the tempo. I might now move to a 3-4 and do the same idea. So the rhythm itself is not changing, but the context of the rhythm, which is a new time signature, will change the way the rhythm works in that context. You can do the same thing in 5-4 or 7-4. So there's really no limit with what you can do with the rhythm, but you have to decide how you want to apply that rhythm in some sort of a framework. That was a, a little small view, a taste mm -hmm. of Ralph's new book. 
uh, check it out. Uh, I put the links um, down in the description. If this was too fast for you also, it has two DVDs and you can rewind. Oh yeah, check out the DVDs. Two hours of a sort of demonstration of, of different pages from the book and it will be helpful for you to, uh, to see how, you know, where I'm coming from with it and then you do your own thing on it. Do it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.